How you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. How about you? Oh, just sick to my heart with this Ukraine. I'm just yeah. so sick, and he's so weird. And and you know, Putin had that rally, and anybody that got interviewed said, "Yeah, we were told to get, to get off work and come down here, or we would be in trouble." And, and yeah, the one in Russia. Yeah. Although, did you did you hear that thing about that he was booed? No, where? Well, there were you know if you if you watch the news, they they the problem is you have to watch too many stories. For, and then someone said there was booing going on and. Uh, that can't be good. I mean, in other words, he'll start to sense that there's internal resistance. Yeah, and he wants to wipe them all out. The Ukrainians. Yeah. Yeah. Is no, he your... wants to wipe out any Russian that isn't for what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I that's that's my sense too. That uh, from the chart, some people in my channel get a little upset about the dire predictions, but. You have to be realistic too, and I, I don't I don't see this guy backing down. I don't see him. Yeah, he's crazy. Crazy. I think he's gonna he's gonna keep going, and uh, I keep getting the sense that even if uh, in the end it's not good for him at all, no, that we could be looking at like either well into this year or even even next year before this thing, you know, before this thing gets resolved. In any will way. he go over the line now? Well, he's stepping into NATO territory. You know that I doubt. That what's your sense of that? That that to me seems. Yeah, well, they said they said he's crazy, but he's not suicidal. Hmm. They were talking today hmm. on the news about all the generals he's lost, four generals, and I don't know how many helicopters and tanks. Well, For a guy who's supposed to have the best military ever, it looks bad, and that the people around him aren't telling them the truth. Because they're scared. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's the thing. No, and, and I mean the numbers, if they're true, and they'll say, well, this is the conservative estimate, and this is the other estimate, and the conservative estimate is crazy. It's the it's yeah. seven thousand to ten thousand dead. That's more than they they lost in like previous wars the whole time. I mean, yeah. America, America lost some thousand. They said, they said with the Korean and something war, two wars that America didn't lose that many. But this is the most Russia's ever lost. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the thing is that you see this in his chart too, this curious thing where the way his planets are set up, he's got this total reliance on disinformation. It's very similar to Trump. T Trumpism and Putinism, it's very similar. You, you basically create a, a story that isn't true and you keep drilling it into people. The problem is that the way it's lined up now, there's a bit of an irony happening in that it's it's playing against them because if you think about the way Biden played it by publishing everything and then now the whole planet is with their everybody's with their cell phones getting information. So then what are the odds that the Russian mothers don't get this information? Oh, I know. And when they start getting it, I mean, you know, you can talk all you like, but when your sons and your family and people are dying, that, that changes the whole narrative. It's why, you know, Trump starts out, oh, he's such a smart guy. Look at this. He conquered the country with 10 cents worth of sanctions. Then he saw all the bodies. And then he said, oh, no, I, I, he's changed. He's changed. I don't even recognize him. So now Trump is, you know, realizing there's nothing to be gained by taking that position, right? No, no. Um, so the only thing is, though, for backing down, I don't know. I just, my sense is that, my sense is that in, we're going to get into a period here where he's going to be like facing a brick wall and he'll just throw even more, you know, missiles and more bombs and more men at it. And so, you know, what do you do? I mean, uh, and you weren't feeling that good about Zelensky. I, I don't ever see Zelensky dying or staying alive. It's sort of just right in the middle. I can't determine, which normally they tell me a bit, but you know, I just feel it's when I got the message from my guides before it even happened, I knew they said this is the beginning of the end of Putin. Putin's going down. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, the thing he loses like, this war if he even takes over the Ukraine. He loses this war because what happens is if he hurts one hair on Zelensky's head or imprisons him or anything, everybody's going to act out. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a losing battle. I mean, that that's that's a consensus too. When you hear all the deep thinkers, 
uh, they'll say this. Well, I th- it's because it didn't work out the way he thought, though. Really, in the end, he totally miscalculated. That's the other thing with people that are that live in a lie. You know, this is the this is Neptune in astrology. If you yeah. get into the dark side of Neptune, you create enough of a lie that you yourself believe it. So then, yeah, you don't, you that's don't like uh, that the that the voting was fake. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Trump got himself so tied into that. Yeah. He couldn't accept the reality that, dude, you think maybe this COVID and some other things and the fact you did nothing while you were in office except give a tax break to the rich, you think maybe people just were done with you? Yeah, no, no, exactly. You couldn't accept that. No, yeah, but then that's the thing. When you've got uh, uh, Putin is more, almost certainly another narcissist, he's just a lot more, he's a lot more subtle and a lot more more uh, crafty than Trump, which of course he would be, he's a KGB agent. That's a pretty obvious thing. And Trump is a, you know, a, sh- a schmuck who basically just, you know. He's but like he car- listened to Putin, what Putin told him to do. Oh, no, I think, I think uh, he was, he was uh, pulling, a, uh, Putin had a Trump on a leash. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. But I don't know if Putin was even worried Trump would lose. Because people are saying, why didn't he do this when Trump was in office? Trump would have, oh, that Janine Pirro, that judge. Yeah. Oh. What? The one that they were I'll saying. tell you, I will tell you why. <laughs> when Trump was in office, he would have gave him a what for. He was afraid of Trump. You know, but I mean, when you think about it, I mean, think about the logic, right? First of all, these guys, the Trump and all these people, they're the coulda, woulda, shoulda people, right? Because everything is, well, if you were, he's not. So let's just talk about what is real. Right. But if you were going to say, well, say he was, Trump didn't, or Putin didn't need to because, because Trump was doing everything he wanted. They would have destroyed NATO. And in that sense, Biden is the one that stepped in and brought NATO back together, right? As, as soon and as so, he took office, he, that's the first yeah, thing he did. Like there's, a re, there's something to be said, what, yeah, Putin would have to attack because once he saw Biden in office, he's seeing the opportunity escape, right? He no yeah. longer can do what he was doing. Trump was helping him so much to disrupt the whole, you know, NATO organization. And he was Germany. hoping that Biden would be like Obama. Hmm. Yeah, but the situation is different. I mean, my son and I had an interesting conversation this morning. My son said that there's two presidents that really got nothing done. One was Trump and the other one was uh, Jimmy Carter. I didn't know that. Yeah, Jim, well, Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter, I think uh, the th- thing he ran into that huge problem with the hostages when Iran was going through the oh, revolution. Okay. And Jimmy Carter's nature, he's just not the type of person to be aggressive. To, yeah, I mean, he could have he could have uh, gotten into a thing. And I mean, and, and we got to give him credit that later he said, well, look, all I can tell you is nobody died. And that's something because it's much easier to say, well, I'm just going to send the destroyers. And then if you kill any hostages, I'll kill 100,000 yeah. Iranians. You know, that you can get into these arguments. And, and, and then people would say, well, that's why he lost the presidency to Reagan. Right. So okay. it's, it's extremely complicated. But, but Jimmy Carter is a wonderful human being. Look at the work he's done. Wonderful. Since that's why I was like, whoa. My son does a lot of research, but the other thing he told me, and tell me if you've heard this, I've never heard this. You know, I saw a body, a burnt body that I saw, thought was Hitler outside the bunker, but apparently the Russians found him with the gunshot in his head and uh, Eva Braun, and they took them someplace and they burned them to a crisp. They didn't want anybody to idolize any piece of him so they did it deliberately now i know i saw a little jaw piece with a couple of teeth in it that's supposed to belong to him so who knows maybe a russian grabbed a piece but they didn't want anything of of, but i didn't know that i thought he he his people took him out and set him on fire yeah i mean the only thing is that this this uh intuitive hit feels more reasonable, more correct to me than the stories that people say. Oh, he he left Argentina, and I'm thinking, come on, no. you know, come on, <laughs> Argentina, like it's no, so, he was so crazy. And it, it's the conspiratorial thinking; it's insane. And the the chart, you can see that it was in a really, really dicey moment. And um, right, and he didn't. He wanted. To, he actually, I had thought the reason his people had set him on fire is he didn't want to be 
mutilated it with his corpse like Mussolini was. Well, that makes sense. He had a fear about that. So I'll have to look that up. I just wanted to ask you if you'd heard that. No, I hadn't heard that. My What I knew from what was what's presented in historical video accounts and whatnot is something about how he shot himself and he had given orders that to be thrown in a pit and burned. That's what I heard, yeah. So that, so that there wouldn't be any, yeah, exactly, because Mussolini met his fate. And That's other. the first time I heard that, so I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. I mean, and, My son, he, 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 he's really intense and he researches everything, so I'll have to check it out. Yeah, no, and I mean, and you can research. With research, it's interesting because if you start cross-referencing, there's so much information out there. You there's come so up much. with a pretty good story about how something... But my, my son said, of everyone in this world, all the, the dictators, etc., the one who has done the most damage and is still doing damage is Hitler. Is Hitler? Mm -hmm. he, it's still, it's still, he's still doing damage. That's the swastika everywhere. Yeah, no, it's like it's like a, it, it inspires, right? The the that that section of society. But the thing is, though, that my sense of the the where the planets are is that we're in the last years of this particular approach, which has been in play since about 2008, 10, 11. Because in 2008, Pluto enters Capricorn, which is a really dangerous sign for this because it stimulates dictatorial government thinking, right? Even though Obama came into power, you could see that there was a lot of resistance to it. And then in 2011, the Neptune change magnifies that. So then you get all the disinformation and all that. But uh, a Capricorn is the sign of government. So now Pluto is going to enter Aquarius in two or three years at the most, because it kind of goes in and out. Neptune switches signs. To me, the danger is not going to be fascism. It's going to be uh, that corporations are going to take over the world. That's my sense of what's going to happen here because it's the sign of the people, Aquarius is, that goes toward democracy, but it's also the sign of groups and groups immediately fits into the idea, you know, corporate boards. I mean, it already in a way, if you think about it, if it isn't for government, Facebook and Google would try to run the world. Oh yeah, I mean, the Koch brothers are already running the world. Yeah, so so that that's my, but but in other words, as far as people like Putin, Trump, uh, I think they're on the wrong the wrong side of the of the of the wave. You know, including this guy. Uh, you know, I don't know if you heard this story. The dictator in China, Xi Jinping. By the way, Xi Jinping is born the next day after Trump. I mean, this is like really giving Gemini a bad name. <laughs> it's quite incredible. So, uh, but he said, "Oh, well, he's delusional too." Yeah, well, he's delusional. I think in a different way because he's delusional, but he's practical delusional. He's not. That's good. Not, he's not a dingbat like Trump. You know, he, he's 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 actually trying to do serious work. Trump is, you know, Trump is like an entertainer more. But yeah. Xi Jinping's idea, and this is what he shares with Putin, is that they said to each other, and and Xi Jinping apparently said this to Biden at some point or to the Americans at some point, that democracy will not succeed in the 21st century because. There is so much information flow and democracies have trouble making decisions quickly. You know, they can't arrive at, you need a consensus. And so, you know, it's like with the US to get anything done, you gotta put it through 42 committees and you're lucky if it happens. So the logic is you need a strong hand to make a decision and, and then you, you get it done. And this is why he's saying this is so. I actually think it could be the opposite because if you look at, look at Putin's role, right? Now you think the guy's in charge of the country. He's got total power and he can't even do a proper invasion. Yeah. I mean, ask yourself that. Now, I'm not suggesting, I mean, in a way I'm thinking it, it sounds nuts because I'm saying he can't do proper murder. But if I, you know, if you can't even do that properly, how can you say that your ability to, you know, make decisions is better? It's actually worse because you're not really telling yourself. And the world is witnessing it. And they're saying China now, who used to consider Russia a power play, now doesn't look at Russia as a power play. No, exactly. No, I mean, because the evidence, the evidence is there. The other thing is the Chinese, I mean, it's a well-known fact that they live by stealing American technology. They, they don't produce anything themselves. So then what are you telling us? So we're going to have, we're going to have these dictatorships where everybody's going to be a slave and nothing will be, there'll be no innovation. This is the world you want to live in? I don't think right. that's a good at all. And yeah. also, you know, that, that, that guy from China, he knows both sides, he knows what part his toast is buttered on. Yeah. You know, that conversation he had and what they announced to everybody, the Chinese, not, not 
Biden, the Chinese announced that it's important to keep the Ukraine out of the hands of Russia. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Now, what made them realize? I think they partly, because you know they play both sides of the fence. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. So, but I think partly they were like kind of watching this in hopes that, gee, we can take Taiwan next week. But seeing the resistance that happened to Putin, that totally changed their mind. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing that that the the, the thing that uh, was so damaging about Trump's uh, constant harassing NATO, and uh, is that when you do that, what you're not realizing is NATO is the West and, and the U.S. That's a forty trillion dollar block, an economic block. So if that yeah. block disapproves of something, you create havoc. That's why now Putin says, oh, you're, they're canceling Russia. Well, of course they're canceling Russia. They're canceling it because you're canceling Ukraine. It's obvious, but they're canceling with their money, which means you affect everything, right? So then the Chinese, per, now, what they're saying now in China, they're reluctant to get involved in this because they're worried about the economic relationship with the- That's exactly right. right. You know, so like I said, he knows what side his bread is buttered Exactly. On. So he's not going to be keen to, you know, if he starts hitting Taiwan, the same thing will happen. The, uh, the entire bloc will say, well, we don't like that. We're going to you know, do sanctions, stop buying from China, et cetera. So that's actually a protecting influence, right? So, yeah, yeah so I, I agree with that 100%. That, you know, it, it, uh, wow, yeah. Buttering both sides, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so the, the trends right now is still a little hardship, huh? Uh, you know, this thing with uh, the April, there's that opposition. So it, it's a thing where... The way, the way it would work in Putin's chart is first, uh, a real bottom, a real problem, a real, um, you know, bad news, things getting really stuck. And then uh, a reaction to increase increase the, the punishment, you know, more men, more missiles, more damage, but not to his favor, because the thing is, when I said, okay, well, it could take till next year, it's not like it's smooth along the way either because he's got all kinds of problems there. It's, it's really misaligned. So then he he really can't get the right... He, I mean, war is hard anyway. War is hard for... Even, even if a country has... If you have like a million soldiers, it is still a, a real problem to, to uh, take over a country that doesn't want to be taken over. That happened to the US multiple times. It's complicated. Well, it happened to them. They went into Afghanistan, you know, the big red machine. Yeah. And uh, and then they couldn't get out, you know? Yeah. Boy, they really got, oh, there's a good movie made uh, with Jackie Gleason's son. I can't remember. So I'll have to post it. It's it's about Russian tankers that got stranded out in Afghanistan. It's wonderful. Very powerful people, the Afghanistans. Afghanistan. But so when you looked at the Ukraine in just the, I don't know if you took a peek 20 years from now. Does it have good aspects or the Ukraine? Yeah, will it will it eventually be a democratic state? I I think you know I don't I don't have a clear view of that. My, my sense is that is that yeah they will, but not right away. The, the Ukraine, I think the in the end result of this is that because okay, let me ask you what you see. So if Putin if Putin is bounced, he's forced to leave, or it's the end of Putin. Do you sense that the Soviet Union puts another nut job equally narcissistic to it him? can attempt, but something major. It's Putin's going down hard. So if they don't put someone, I I saw Navalny waving at everybody. So I think you know they will rise. They've done it before, and I see them leaving um, the Ukraine alone. What's well, you know, so funny? We had to give Germany money to help rebuild, even though they started this war. I, when I saw that, I was like, whoa. But I see it's still pouring money in the Ukraine so they can rebuild. But here's my problem. And I think I told you this, or I was on some show and I said it. I never quite knew what was going to happen to Zelensky. Boy, he turned out being a hero, if you know what I mean. He's so beloved. Like I said, he they hurt one hair on his head or to mistreat him. It's over. It's over. It's true. Well, it's true. See, the thing is, his chart, because it turns out he, he actually said his time on, on TV. He said he was born at 2 p.m. He said it. So then. That's oh, you were like, yay! Yeah, well, I know I didn't hear it, but I read it. You know, I found that it was a correct thing. So correct time. So 
his chart shows that it's definitely a moment of fame and notoriety. That's there. The problem is that it also shows this pretty Hardship. huge problem and uh, that it, it really goes toward this peak at the end of April, but it starts to build as we move into April because these astrology peaks, they're not just on the day. It's like a wave. So you get, so basically yeah. April and May are dangerous months. He has to be really careful. To not to not be in a lot of trouble. And what I saw was a white flag, which usually means surrender. But I can't tell you is the white flag from from him or from Russia. I don't know. Mm, what's a big difference? Let's hope is let's hope is from. I saw the waving of a white flag. Yeah. Well, I to to, to my sense would be that that the Ukraine, uh, in other words, this whole thing. Uh, well, let's just say this. I, I don't see him going into NATO. That would be extremely surprising. Like, for example, people say Moldova and things like that. I, I'm not buying that. I think he's got his hands full holding on to this. And I don't I don't see Putin uh, bringing Ukraine back into Russia. I don't see that. No. That doesn't fit either. So then the only logical thing is that is that eventually Ukraine becomes its own state. But think about it, right? If Ukraine becomes its own its own state again, now they're going to be asking for NATO, <laughs> for NATO protection right away. I mean, this, you know, Finland is asking, is thinking about it now. They, they used to be neutral. Oh, and I do see the Ukraine going into NATO, whether Zelensky's running it or not. Down the road, I see NATO taking them in. Well, then there you go. So then, then so then this would tell you that in the end, Russia has to be content with the land they have minus Ukraine, which is what they already had, right? And their, their argument when they say, well, this is our land. Well, it was your land because you conquered it. On, you know, you, you use force. They, they were sending in tanks and Czechoslovakia, like, we're just going to take it. How does yeah. that mean? How does that say that this is your land? This and, is and you know, hello, America is guilty as charged because Mexico, you know, California and Mexico. Get, what's stopping Mexico from bringing takes and taking their country back, their land back? Yes, yeah, what's yeah. The, to stop the Native Americans? Cut you know, getting powerful and taking their land, you know. I don't know why man has to fight man, but that's the way it is. Always conquering. Well, it is. The Rome. It is. I mean, that that is a sad reality. I mean, in the end, the, the problem with all this is that if people bring up the so-called, uh, you know, the equivalency thing, the U.S. is bad as well. I, I just remind people, look, you got to know what team you're on and you got to know the lesser of two evils. There is no... Well, you know, this is what I'll say about this. We learned our lesson. Yeah. Well, We've pretty much learned our lesson. There's a lot of slights, like right now with these governors saying, we don't need to teach slavery and all that. That's bullshit. In Germany is very, they, they teach about what happened when the Nazis were in control. Mm -hmm. They're constantly talking about it. In fact, now they're talking about, you know, getting the tanks and playing. They're going to add to their budget because for a long time they didn't. Know, but because of all this, they're thinking we better protect ourselves. Isn't that funny that, uh, that I saw this meme where this person who is a German supposedly wrote, so wait, let me just understand what you're saying. You want us to increase our arms and develop a big, is that what you're saying? So there won't be any misunderstandings later. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And the, thing but the is, tendency of, of man is to take over. That's why we need women running things. Yeah, well, that, that's another, that's a totally separate topic. But uh, yeah. I've talked a lot about the Iris situation and how it is going that way. It's just that, you know, in astrology, you see this, that when, when you get uh, cycles, they don't happen overnight. You see that there's this, this tendency, right? So Iris was discovered in 2005. And in a, in, a, in a way, for a while, it just creates chaos and, and confusion yeah. because that's one of the, yeah. but you do see that uh, female energy has been growing and growing right. since then. And uh, I think it will continue to grow. And, and But, you know, then again, I mean, what about if it, you get Margaret Thatcher type females too, right? So, because they, yeah, they that was a good movie, The Crown, that show. Yeah. That really showed, I didn't really pay attention to who she was, but boy, when I watched that, I was like, whoa, what a, <laughs> she, she was she was quite militant right I mean, oh. I mean, and see this is the thing the thing is that uh maybe it's more about the wisdom of the female energy because 
females are, are oft, almost always better at cooperating. Right. But it takes take the case of recent years. If you take uh, if you take Bush, uh, Bush, I, I even would count Bush, Bush, Hillary, Obama, Biden. Hillary is the most hawkish along that group. She's the most likely to have said to Putin, yeah, I'm going to put in a, a, a no-fly zone and like stare at him and say, let's see you try something, right? Oh, you um, think she would have? Yeah, she's, oh, no, oh she, I don't know, Biden's a sport too. Yeah, but Biden, but Biden, I think is is a little more cautious around, uh, I don't oh, think he's going to stare Putin down and say, what are you going to send in the planes? And you, you want to try a nuke? You do that and then watch what happens, right? Because right, knows, and you know, their, our intel will be able to determine if one of their nukes is even warming up well, no. Yeah, almost. So, I mean, it creates a really tense situation. So, this is my point that that uh, in that sense, Hillary, sure, she's a woman, but be careful. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with a, a Scorpio. No. Yeah, Scorpio, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know what gets me? I was thinking about her the other day. How she sat, and all those Congress wanted her to sit for hours, eight hours at a time, so they could talk to her about, you know all that, you know, the, the email server and all this stuff. And then yet all these guys who were part of this, let's, let's burn Hillary at a stake. Uh, fifth, I'm claiming the fifth. Oh yeah, that's brutal. What a bunch of fancies. I mean, the thing is though, that, that see that the logic of it is, as I understand, it, it's not about truth anymore. No. It, it's a racial thing. So what you've got here is the, it's a, it's a white male patriarchal attitude. So right. they look at it as white males with their suits should be able to control everything. And so then they talk that way and they know they have listeners and they, you know, who are not wearing suits, but are similarly inclined, you know, to be racially, you know, identity driven. So then right. they know they're going to get their vote and they pretty much know, well, whatever, we're lying. We say one thing today, we say one thing tomorrow. It doesn't matter. However, you do see all these splits because look at what's happening now with Marjorie Taylor Greene oh. and even uh, even uh, uh, Lindsey Graham, you know, saying, well, you know, these people, instead of saying, you should just say, you know, she's a total dingbat, stop listening to her. But instead he says, well, there are these outliers in our party and we're not too happy about that. Oh, but McCarty did too about that guy yeah. in the wheelchair. Yeah. Oh, you know, he's out, out to lunch with that. But they said, would you... Support him if he ran for office again. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, well, what about absolutely. what about Barr? William Barr, he he says in his book, he literally says Trump was mentally unstable or mentally, you know, un mentally deficient enough that he shouldn't be president. And then they ask him, and then, well, what if he runs again? Well, then, yeah, then because I, I, I'll i support the Republican candidate. Yeah, but you're, you're supporting a... He just got well, done saying he's a, you know, what... Yeah, it's 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 brutal. I mean, it's brutal that you can't say once you say a person is not capable to do a job, then it doesn't matter what party they're in. It should be obvious. What did you did you pick? Because I watch your your videos, I love them. But uh, did you actually do Marjorie Taylor Greene? Her aspect? Oh yeah, yeah, more than once. How yeah. did it look for her? Not good. I, I there's a there's a really good chance that uh, you know the thing is you got to study the um, the the uh, demographics in her district, but. Uh, her chart is complicated enough. If I had to call it, she's going to lose her seat, which she should. I mean, the woman, the woman is crazy and she's, and she's, and she's borderline evil. I mean, really, you know, her and that Warren um, Goldberg sitting there screaming at Biden in the, yeah, the two of them. Yeah. You know, with on the cell phone 24 seven. Hers was a little less clear when I looked at the chart, like Marjorie's is, is the, the type of chart where you're walking into a ditch, you know, without realizing it, you're, you're playing with forces that turn on you, you know, um, right. when the time comes. The other one, I don't know about, I don't have time for either, but you can still see it in Marjorie's without, with Lauren Boger, I wasn't quite as sure, you know. Okay. Then, yeah, but. Well, is it, she the one from Colorado? Um, I can't remember. I, I think, think I think, is. I think Marjorie is, she's in the East Coast somewhere. I don't know. What, no, but she's Boebert, from I think Georgia. Is, yeah. I think Marjorie's from Georgia. But Lauren Bolbart, because there's a lot of smart people in Colorado. I don't see her getting back on. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of this is that is, is the, see the, the thing that I'm having a bit of a uh, trouble adjusting my this vision I'm getting about how I, I don't know how to fit it in that if Putin continues to do this because I know that 
it's playing well for Biden. Biden's chart is ascending. You you already saw that. You noticed that he goes in the State of the Union, he talked about Ukraine and his point. He, eight his point. numbers went up. Ten yeah, point. I mean, you know, and by the way, the polls say that 90% of Americans are against Putin now. 90%. So, I mean, it's pretty right. clear, right, what, what the sentiment is. And so because Biden is managing the situation and he's doing a, a quite a good job of keeping NATO together, it's playing in his favor. But the thing is, if it keeps extending, you know, the way people are, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how that would work. Why? I think you and I both have seen that the 22 elections should go, will, will go okay for the Democrats. Right? That's what I see. But, you know, yeah, I right. don't see no shock and awe. No, no. So, so it's it's a little strange though, to think that this Ukraine thing would get extended and extended into the into the summer. Maybe it'll be like maybe it'll be like a stalemate of some kind where he keeps part of the Ukraine and I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's not clear to me yet how that how yeah. that goes. But I but I do uh, that Trump is ascending or uh, Biden is ascending is really clear. And even more, you see in his chart that the the thing that is really working for him in the summer is the foreign affairs area which was the area that was being crushed in 2021 when the Afghanistan thing happened, because then it was, Saturn was just hitting him really hard. And right. now he's got Jupiter, you know, helping out that area. So what else could it be? Yeah, we just got to get the cost of living down a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that hmm, what do you see? Probably don't that? do financial on charts. I don't. Financially, I don't see horrible Armageddon. Everybody said, oh, the stock market, and it crashed a little bit. It's right back up. What, what Five, is, 600 points back up. Yeah, it's, well, at the moment, it's volatile, right? Going back up. But that time. doesn't really tell you about the economy. What it is, what it is, is it's hitting people's pockets. Everything is more money. I yeah. remember getting the thing of chicken for like nine bucks. It's like $17 now. Yeah, well, some of it, though, is because it's still the... the uh, the effect of the pandemic it caused right but a lot of it is price price gouging trust me on that yeah you know when it was up to six seven dollars out here in california mm -hmm. gas gas yeah and trump said uh, not trump biden said you know what we're going to start taxing the 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 big tax the big uh, gas people the barons of gas 50 percent of their profits they're making off of this and we're going to take that money and we're going to give it to the regular Americans earning under $75,000 a year. Boom. All of a sudden it started dropping. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, no, that makes sense. No, I mean, they, that people take advantage. I mean, this is the problem with, with capitalism, even though it's pretty much the only system we know works. But Remember that guy that developed a drug that helped save people's lives or he was selling it? I think it was the, the oh, shot you take. Oh. The, the, and he the, had that smirk on his face. Oh, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. No, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! Did he go to jail or he had he some? Yes, yeah. he went to jail. Yeah, he had that smirk on his face. Like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, no. And this is the thing that the thing is that is that uh, many times people get impatient. You know, they'll say, "Why isn't that person in prison already?" And uh, but it, in democracies, it takes time. What, what's your sense of of Garland? What do you see there? I see him going in and finding those Russians that are working, those Russian bots that are working through our country. He's going to really follow the money on that. That's going to hurt the Republicans. Yeah, well, that, that's because I, that, there's a lot of linking, and they are. He's hired special teams. Let me tell you, this show isn't over yet. Yeah, no, I know that. That's that's pretty much how I see it. Even though there are people that that call him out, you know, if you watch the news, I mean, the thing is. He's done this twice and there is zero reason if you are going to do nothing, you know, if your attitude is I can't go after Trump and so forth. Once earlier in the year, he said explicitly in a 30 minute presentation, anyone who's committed a crime at any level is going to be in trouble. Why would you say that? That's a stupid right. thing and to say. Let me tell you it, something, too. I don't know what Trump's charts look like, but I think okay. they're actually going to get him on that uh, January 6th thing. It would surprise me. Do criminal charges against them. It would not surprise me. And and we're closer to that than we are far away, so to speak, because now as we go into the spring and into the summer, it is not good at all for Trump, right? Right. So it makes perfect sense because it's it all lines up with like the legal houses and you know the places where the but I never really saw Trump going to jail. I'm sorry, just never saw it for years now. People go, oh Linda, Linda. I want to see him in the, in the in the orange, you know, 
I said, I, I, for some reason, I, I see him furious. I see him, how dare you? I see him sitting at a table with all kinds of lawyers and talking to a judge, but for some reason, so I'm wondering if his health goes bad or something happens, but for some reason, I never saw him going. And the other thing is, you know, Merrick Garland or whoever, maybe worried about the pulse of the country. And if they were, if we were to put him in jail, what riotous aspect should we expect? Because they don't care what he did. No, and you know, the thing about it is with that is that is that with Trump, if you if you ruin him financially, if you oh, that's separate him, happen. if you if you separate him from his political power, you essentially have put him in a jail. I mean, the man, he's so narcissistically driven. Some people you don't need to put him behind, you know, you put him in jail, maybe he starts talking from there and causes more problems. I mean, that's you know, it really doesn't matter. The whole point is it's breaking, you know. To turn he will be nine. broke, but I don't see him sitting in a jail. Yeah, well then, yeah. And I mean, the thing is, in, in his chart, it, it's kind of the thing where what it's saying is the house that gets hit or that is affected uh, has connections to jail, but it's just also a, a place of loss, a place of, of karmic retribution. I see retribution. like some public, now this is entertainment purposes only, only, but I see like a picture do you remember, I don't know if you remember, but a long time ago, someone got a picture of Ronald Reagan in the throes of Alzheimer's. And he looked just wild-eyed and unkept. And, you know, Nancy Reagan was all upset. Somebody got a picture of it and they posted it on probably the Inquirer magazine. I see a picture like that with Trump. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, the, way, the way his chart is configured, that is entirely possible yeah because because when you see uh, uh it's a little bit like uh the muhammad ali complex right the the thing where you can be vibrant and communicative and incredibly charismatic and and change into something totally different if the chart has some some you know pattern there and right he's got, he's got it he's got that famous t-square of his pointing to the 12th absolutely and especially because you see this long, long period of, of planetary pressure through that Eris planet, it's it's gonna it's going in there and it's not gonna let go. It's like being in a in a vice for a decade. Oh, right when you said, "Watch what happens," I can't remember the month, but you started saying, "Uh oh, time to pay, buddy," and that's yeah. when things seems like. And you said it's gonna get worse as time goes on. Yeah, yeah, because because the thing is, in twenty twenty one, through the coincidence of. He, that was the, the year of the election and it, things were really, you know, intense and so forth. So for that reason and other reasons, uh, but it coincided with Jupiter was helping him. And Jupiter is the kind of planet. I remember uh, this astrologer back in the Nixon days, he had made this comment that Nixon lasted far longer than he would have were it not for Jupiter. When Jupiter left the, the, uh, the place of the moon, that's when it just went. Everything so Jupiter permanent. was kind of keeping him on board. But Jupiter isn't helping anymore. Now it's doing very temporary uh, help measures, not like a whole year like that. So, yeah, he's completely exposed at this point. Right? Wow. And, and the wow. thing is, he's, he's at his weakest point now because people say, oh, he's going to take over the world. That's He would have done that while he was president. It's harder now because you don't have any of the levers of power. You know? and, 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 and the law, when it comes after you, you know, people that are coming after you, they have careers that they're trying to build and they have a lot of incentive. And right. it's not like right. this guy, I mean, if you said, well, his thing is, well, it's a witch hunt. No, it's not. There are papers. <laughs> you left a paper trail. Come on. <laughs> Double books in your business, you know. Yeah. Or this thing with the... And you know who started that? Because he was despondent, Trump was, when he lost. Who started that was uh, Giuliani. When in that book I read with uh, Bob Woodward, he said that um, people were begging Ivanka and everybody to get Giuliani out of the room because he just was creating. He says, I have over a thousand people right here on my property that shows that they were dead and they voted Democrats. And I guess when you really ask him, OK, show it to us. He never. Happened. No, no. Well, I mean, that, this is the thing that this is the one thing that it's so dangerous in democracies that that there isn't a law that says a person in public service cannot make things up 
you, you can't just say things. I mean, when you say First Amendment, it's one thing if I say it, <clears throat> okay, fine. Well, I'm saying things, you're saying things, but you're in public office. You've been elected to represent the people and then you make things up. There's no, yeah. now Giuliani in court would tell the judge, oh no, 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 we're not alleging fraud, Your Honor, but you were just outside in front of a microphone alleging there was fraud. Is there a fraud or is there not fraud? He knows, right? That in court, right. you can't do that. I and that's the, the same with the Kraken too, the tall gal. Oh, she's brutal. The Kraken. She yeah. said, who in their right mind would believe what I have to say? Right. Well, you know, maybe maybe the solution is those when they get sued and uh, then they have to pay because they, they were saying things about that company and now they're getting sued for billions. Maybe that's the only solution. Yeah, but, Fox News is going to get ahead with a lot of lawsuits. Yeah. Jack, shush. But the thing, the thing is that to to institutionalize that a little more, I think would be really helpful because this thing where po politicians can just lie, you know, if democracy, if you don't have some sense of truth, it's just impossible, right? right? And then you get right. you get a guy like Trump who realizes that and he exploits it to the limit. He just realizes, exactly. I can make things up and whatever, you know? Yeah, I just wanted to say to whoever's watching this on my channel that Linda has been by far the most accurate intuitive <laughs> that I know. In fact, no, I got to tell you, it's true. I, you brought up Putin. I remember you told me in December, you were saying, I'm kind of worried about Putin. And I think, hmm, really? So you were tuning in already, which is, which is really quite remarkable, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, later. And you're, you, let me tell you, I like a lot of astrologers, but man, I tell people, in fact, when we're done with this, I have a very famous client I need you to read. Oh, well. So, um, oh my God. They're not in the mafia, are they? No. <laughs> Close show business. Show business, okay. So, um, well, listen, my friend. Today's the day I'm doing the party for my son, oh, Jeffrey, nice. my baby who turned 27, and his cousin's coming over, and we're gonna do pizza, and, and I'm actually gonna make a vegetarian shepherd's pie. Nice. Don't nice. ask me if I'll be. It'll be good. <laughs> nice. Well, cool. happy birthday, to you. Happy oh, birthday. thank you. So was there any other question maybe you had on your mind that I can answer? No, I think that's good. I think we've we've covered we've covered a lot of ground. I think probably the main thing, if we had to summarize it, is to say that we, we both we both have a sense that things turn out OK, but probably in the near term, you have to steal yourself for some. Well, um, uh, Dr. Green, the one that does the fifth, uh, I have his, his site. Uh, you know, how you can talk, contact ETs. I don't know if you believe in that or not, but uh, I well, really enjoy let's him. Let's just say that I, I don't know how, but... Yeah, but he done. has a lot of meetings with a lot of Washington people because of his abilities. It's CE5 contact. So Dr. Green said that everybody's asking, well, how come the, the, the aliens don't just save us and help us? And he said, they said, we're not a civilized society yet. Well, that's true. You think that's true? <laughs> but but if it ends up being nukes, that's when they step in. Really? Oh, they wouldn't let us destroy the earth. But they're not going to stop something like the Ukraine because we're not civilized enough. Yeah, well, that they were not civilized enough is totally true. I mean, Putin is showing us that in space, this barbaric, you know, just go in and, and uh, kill people. Because really, it doesn't matter. I mean, what could your reason be? How is it ever right. worth it to run over? They're actually his own people, really. It'd be like if the U.S. went to war with Alabama or, you know, with, or with Massachusetts. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty crazy, right? They're, they're, they're becoming too independent. Like California, there's, there's a state that, you know, Trump hates California because California was rebelling constantly against what he wanted to do, right? Again, so, and you know, I read a lot of clients in California. And there's a lot of Trumpsters in California. Yeah, well, I'm like really, because he, he lost by a landslide out here. Yeah, there is, but I mean, it's a little bit like it's like uh, there are Russians in Ukraine too, but the, the majority of, of Ukrainians don't like Russia. The majority of Californians don't like Trump, even right. though yeah, it's like that. So right. sure. All right. Okay, my friend. That was great. Thank Enjoy so the much. rest of your day. Thank you.